After the Umayyads were ousted from power by the Abbasids in 750, Prince Abdur Rahman fled Damascus and arrived in North Africa. From there he reached Cordova, the capital of Muslim Spain in 756, and swiftly assumed control of that country. Abdur Rahman's unexpected rise to power in Spain assured the continuation of Umayyad rule in the Islamic West for almost another 300 years. By unifying Spain under his able leadership, he also inaugurated one of the most memorable periods in European history. Under the guidance of his descendants, Spain became one of the most advanced European nations of the time. Cordova also became one of Europe's most impressive capitals. Thanks to their generous patronage of learning, Cordova became a thriving center of intellectual, cultural, and literary activities. As a result, scholars, scientists, mathematicians, philosophers, and theologians flocked from across Europe to the leading Spanish cities in order to learn under the tutelage of Europe's great minds. At the time, some of Europe's leading scientists, intellectuals, and writers were Muslims who flourished in Spain under Umayyad patronage. Al-Zarawi was one such scholar and scientist whose contribution and achievement in the field of medicine and surgery was unique and unprecedented. Abul Qasim al-Zarawi, better known in Europe as Abul Qasis, was born in the royal suburb of Zara in Cordova during the reign of Caliph Abdur Rahman III. Born in 936 when Muslim Spain was at its intellectual zenith, al-Zarawi grew up to be a talented child. After completing his early education in Arabic, Islamic, and physical sciences, he developed a keen interest in medicine. He received advanced training in Cordova under the guidance of its leading physicians and soon acquired a considerable reputation. It was during this period that Caliph Abdur Rahman III came to hear about the young physician and invited al-Zarawi to his court. He was in his mid-twenties, but the caliph was impressed by his knowledge and understanding of medicine. He served the caliph as personal physician until his death in 961 at the age of 71, having ruled Muslim Spain for half a century. As a physician, al-Zarawi was an inheritor of traditional Islamic medicine. Ancient Greek physicians like Hippocrates, Galen, Dioscorides, and Paul of Aegina were highly skilled. But Muslim physicians like Al-Kindi, Ali Ibn Rabban al-Tabari, and Abu Bakr al-Razi were the first to introduce Greek medicine into the Muslim world. The Greeks considered medicine to be yet another scientific discipline like astronomy and cosmology, but the early Muslim scientists and physicians refused to compartmentalize science. They developed an integrated approach based on the fundamental principles and practices of Islam. This was influenced by the prophetic medicine. This approach to medical science sought to remedy the physical ailments, but without overlooking the emotional and spiritual dimension of man. Al-Zarawi also studied and practiced medicine from a holistic perspective. He believed that diseases and ailments were best treated in their wider context rather than in isolation. He was 25 when Al-Hakam ascended the throne in Cordova and asked him to serve as his personal physician. Like his father, Al-Hakam was a wise, peaceful, and benevolent ruler. He promoted learning across Muslim Spain and transformed the academy in Cordova into one of the largest institutions of education in Europe at the time. The libraries of Cordova were packed with books and manuscripts on all the sciences of the day. The caliph recruited the brightest minds of the time to his institutions. Such was al-Hakam's enthusiasm for learning and scholarship that historians have compared him with Abbasid Caliph al-Mamun. Now al-Zarawi had full access to the caliph's private library, which contained some of the best medical textbooks of the day. This enabled him to carry out groundbreaking research in medicine and developed scores of new surgical tools and techniques. He pursued research and experiments to verify his theories at a practical level. As a pioneer of surgical anatomy, he performed a large number of operations, ranging from simple caesarean sections to more complex and delicate eye operations. He performed such surgical operations at a time when there were no suitable medical tools or equipment to assist him. This prompted him to develop surgical equipment which would enable him to perform medical operations with success. In the process, he laid the foundations for the modern science of surgery. Reluctance of the early Muslim physicians to carry out surgical operations did hinder the development of clinical anatomy in the Muslim world, but al-Zarawi invented the surgical tools needed for performing such operations. He not only invented a large number of surgical tools, but also performed numerous operations using the same tools, thus paving the way for the emergence of surgical procedures and techniques as we know them today. He understood and appreciated why women preferred to be operated on by women rather than men, so he trained midwives to carry out emergency caesarean operations and other clinical procedures on women. If an operation turned out to be more difficult than anticipated, he provided guidance to the midwives from behind a screen. After a lifetime devoted to medical research, al-Zarawi authored a book on the subject. Ibn Sina, who was another renowned Muslim physician and philosopher, was busy writing his famous canon of medicine at the time. Like Ibn Sina's canon, Al-Zarawi's Kitab al-Tasrif played a pivotal role in the development of modern medicine, surgical procedures, and techniques. 
Consisting of 30 chapters, it was a massive encyclopedia on medicine and surgery. Soon after its publication, it became one of the most popular surgical textbooks. The book contained illustrations of around 200 different surgical tools and equipment, most of which he had invented himself, and all the illustrations were accompanied by a brief explanation of each tool, its meaning, and purpose. The surgical part of his book became so popular in Europe that it was first translated into Latin by Gerard of Cremona and published in Venice in 1497. Thereafter, it was published in Strasbourg in 1532, Basel in 1541, and Oxford in 1778. This book was rated so highly by the Europeans that it was prescribed to all medical students at Europe's leading universities until as late as the 18th century. The famous French surgeon Guy de Chauliac considered it to be such an important textbook on surgery that he included it in one of his own works. Although al-Zarawi became famous in the Western world as the father of surgery, his works did not receive similar recognition in the Islamic East, perhaps because surgery was never a popular branch of medicine in the Muslim world but he had contributed more to the development of medicine and surgery than any other single individual in the history of medicine. Al-Zarawi died at the age of 77 and was buried in his native Cordova. If you enjoyed this video and would like more, please subscribe and share.